Military workforce needs were so great that Army Chief of Staff General George Marshall pushed for the formation of the Women's Auxiliary Army Corps, WAAC. There are innumerable duties now being performed by soldiers that can be done better by women, Marshall said in support of a bill to establish the Women's Auxiliary Army Corps. Under this bill, women volunteers would serve in non-combat positions. Women worked as nurses, ambulance drivers, radio operators, typists, electricians, and pilots. On the extension of the draft, Roosevelt and Churchill met secretly at a summit aboard the battleship USS Augusta. Although Churchill hoped for a military commitment, he settled for a joint declaration of war aims called the Atlantic Charter. Roosevelt disclosed to Churchill that he couldn't ask for Congress for a declaration of war against Germany, but he could wage war and do everything to enforce an accident. The Atlantic Charter became bias of the de document called the Declaration of the United Nations. The United Nations was suggested by Roosevelt to express the common purpose of allies, those nations that fought the Axis power. The Declaration was signed by 26 nations. Forty, Britain had no more cash to spend on the arsenal of democracy. Roosevelt tried to help by suggesting a new plan that he called a lend-lease policy. Under this plan, the president would lend or lease arms and supplies to any country whose defense was vital to the United States. Roosevelt compared his plan to lending a garden hose to a neighbor's house, which was on fire. He asserted that this was the only sensible thing to do to prevent the fire from spreading to his own property. Isolationists argued bitterly against the plan, but most Americans favored it, and Congress passed the Lend-Lease Act in 1941. Peace talks went on for a month. Then, on December 6, 1941, Roosevelt received a decoded message that instructed Japan's peace envoy to reject all American peace proposals. This means war, Roosevelt declared. Early the next morning, a Japanese dive bomber swooped low over Pearl Harbor the largest U.S. naval base in the Pacific. The bomber was followed by more than 100, 180 Japanese warplanes, which launched from six air carriers. As the first Japanese bombs found their targets, a radio operator flashed this message, Air Raid on Pearl Harbor. This is not a drill. Italian African Americans served in the war, although they had to serve in segregated units. They weren't able to see combat until later in the war. Some of them were fighter pilots who flew more than 15, that 1,500 missions in Europe. And they were called Tuskegee Airmen. Native Americans that used the Navajo language to form secret codes in the Pacific that the Japanese weren't able to decode were called Navajo code talkers. The administration also established programs to provide relief through work projects and cash payments. One important program, the Civilian Conservation Corps, CCC, put young men aged at 18 to 25 to work building roads, developing parks, planting trees, and helping in soil erosion and flood control projects. By the time the program ended in 1942, almost 3 million young men had passed through the CCC. The CCC paid a small wage of $30 a month, of which $25 was automatically sent home to the workers' family. It also supplied free food and uniforms and logging and work camps. Many of the camps were located in the Great Plains, where within a period of eight years, the men of the CCC planted more than two million trees. This tremendous reinforcement programs was aimed to, at preventing another dust bowl. The Public Work Administration created in June 1933 as part of the National Industry Recovery Act, NIRA, provided money to states to create jobs chiefly in the construction of schools and other community buildings. When these programs failed to make a sufficient dent in unemployment, President Roosevelt established the Civil Works Administration in November 1933. He provided 4 million intermediate jobs during the winter of 1933 through 1934. Although some critics of the end of the CWA claimed that the projects were made work projects and a waste of money. The CWA built 40,000 schools and paid salaries of more than 50,000 teach school teachers in America's rural areas. It was also built more than a half million miles of roads. The NIRA also sought to promote industrial growth by establishing codes of fair practice for individual industries. It created the National Recovery Administration, NRA, which set prices of many products and established standards. The aim of the NRA was to promote recovery by interrupting the trend of wage cuts, falling prices, and layoffs. 
the economist Gardner C. Means attempted to justify the NRA by stating the goal of the industrial planning. The codes of fair practice had been drafted in joint meetings of businesses and representatives of workers and consumers. These codes with both limited production and established prices because businesses were given new construct concessions, workers make demands. Congress met their demands by passing a section of the NIRA guaranteeing workers' rights to uni unionize and bargainize collectively. Many businesses and politicians were cr critical of the NRA. Charges arose that the codes served large business interests. There were also charges of increasing code violations. As a as part of the Second New Deal, the Roosevelt administration and Congress set up a series of programs to help youths, professionals, and other workers. One of the largest was the Works Process Administration, headed by Harry Hopkins, the former chief of the Federal Emergency Relief Administration. The WPA set out to create as many jobs as possible as quick as possible. Between 1935 and 1943, it spent $11 billion to give jobs to more than 8 million workers, most of them unskilled. These workers built 850 airports throughout the country, constructed or repaired many miles of roads and streets, and put up more than 125,000 public buildings. Women workers in sewing shops made 300 million gar garments for the needy. One of the most important achievements of the New Deal was creating the Social Security System. The Social Security Act, passed in 1935, was created by a committee chaired by Secretary of Labor Francis Perkins. The act had three major parts, old age insur insurance for retirees 65 and older and their spouses, an employment compensation system, and aid to families with dependent children and people with disabilities. Although the Social Security Act was not a total pension system or a complete welfare system, it provided substantial benefits to millions of Americans. In 1935, the Supreme Court declared the NIRA unconstitutional, citing that the federal government had violated legislative authority reserved for individual states. One of the first reforms of the Second New Deal was passage of the National Labor Relations Act, more commonly called the Wagner Act after its sponsor, Senator Robert F. Wagner of New York. The act reestablished the NRA provision of collective bargaining. The federal government, again, protected the rights of workers to join unions and encouraged in collective bargaining with employers. One of the main bargaining tactics of the labor movement in the 1930s was the sit-down strike. Instead of walking off their jobs, workers remained inside their plants, but they did not work. This prevented the factory owners from carrying on production with strike breakers. Many Americans disapproved of this sit-down strike, calling it a violation of private property, but it proved to be an effective bargaining tool. In 1934, Roosevelt passed the Reciprocal Trade Agreement Act through Congress. This act lowered trade barriers by giving the president the power to make trade agreements with other nations and was aimed at reducing tariffs by as much as 50%. In an effort to keep the United States out of future wars, beginning in 1935, Congress passed a series of neutrality acts. The first two acts outlawed arms sales or loans to nations at war. The third act was passed in response to the fighting in Spain. This act extended the ban on arms sales and loans to nations engaged in civil The military's workforce needs were so great that the Army Chief of Staff General George Marshall pushed for the formation of a Women's Auxiliary Army Corps. Under this bill, women volunteers would serve in non-combat non positions. Despite opposition from some members of Congress, the bill establishing the WAAC became a law on May 15, 1942. The law gave the WAACs an official status and salary, but few of the benefits granted to male soldiers. In, in July 1943, after thousands of women had enlisted, the U.S. Army dropped the auxiliary status and granted WACs full U.S. Army benefits. WACs worked as nurses, ambulance drivers, radio operators, electricians, and pilots, nearly every duty not involving direct combat. While Mexican Americans and African Americans struggled with racial tension, the war produced tragic results for Japanese Americans. The surprise Japanese attack on Pearl Harbor in Hawaii had stunned the nation. After the bombing, panic-stricken citizens feared that the Japanese would soon attack the United States. This sense of fear and uncertainty caused a wave of prejudice against Japanese Americans. 
Early in 1942, the War Department called for the mass evacuation of all Japanese Americans from Hawaii. General Delos Imans, the military governor of Hawaii, resisted the order because 37% of the people in Hawaii were Japanese Americans. To remove them would have destroyed the island's economy and hindered U.S. military operations there. However, he was eventually forced to order the internment or confinement of 1,444 Japanese Americans, 1% of Hawaii's Japanese American population. Obsessed with the desire to rid Europe of its Jews, Hitler imposed what he called the final solution, the policy of genocide, the deliberate and systematic murder of an entire population. Hitler's final solution rested on the belief that Aryans were a superior people and that the strength and purity of this master race must be preserved. To accomplish this, the Nazis condemned to slavery and death not only the Jews but other groups that they viewed as inferior or unworthy as enemies of the state. These groups included the following, gypsies, whom the, Nazi believed, the Nazis believed to be an inferior race, Freemasons, whom the Nazis charged as supporters of the Jew Jewish conspiracy, and Jehovah's Witnesses, who refused to join the army or salute Hitler. Under Eisenhower's direction in England, the Allies gathered a force of nearly 3 million British, American, and Canadian troops, together with mountains of military equipment and supplies. Eisenhower planned to attack Normandy in northern France. To keep their plans secret, the Allies set up, huge phantom, set up a huge phantom army with its own headquarters and equipment. In radio messages, they knew the Germans could read. Allied commanders sent orders to this make-believe army to attack the French port of Calais. Eisenhower gave the go-ahead for D-Day, June 6, 1944, the first day of the invasion. Shortly after midnight, three divisions parachuted down behind German lines. They were followed in the early morning hours by thousands upon thousands of seaborne soldiers, the largest land, sea, air operation in Army history. Despite the massive air and sea bombardment by the Allies, German retaliation was brutal. brutal. Despite heavy casualties, the Allies held the beach heads. After seven days of fighting, the Allies held an 80-mile strip of France. The Allied forces in the Pacific were Americans and Australians. In May 1942, they succeeded in stopping the Japanese drive toward Australia in the five-day battle of the Coral Sea. During this battle, the fighting was done by airplanes that took off from enormous aircraft carriers. Not a single shot was fired by surface ships. For the first time since Pearl Harbor, a Japanese invasion had been stopped and turned back. A week after Hitler died, General Eisenhower accepted the unconditional surrender of the Third Reich. On May 8, 1945, the Allies celebrated VE Day, Victory in Europe Day. The war in Europe was finally over.